Thank you, Marshi. Uh, very good evening to all participants and uh, speakers to this Asami India Masterclass. Asami India has taken this initiative to have a monthly masterclass on various topics related to limb reconstruction. And in that series, the Gujarat state is going to have their webinar sorts in uh, uh, today on the bone transport. We have uh, eminent speakers like Professor Denis Mokhovikov. Sorry if I have pronounced it correct. <laughs> incorrect. Uh, Dr. Amar Soni, who is uh, named by himself and famous for transports. So is Purav Kansara and Dr. Harjit. They are the speakers for the day. And uh, now I hand over to Shamsul for the introduction of the faculty and the future, uh, further proceedings. Thank you, sir. And very good evening to all. So I welcome you all for our another uh, very important uh, masterclass uh, series of Assam in India. And today we have a very interesting uh, topic of uh, uh, bone transport, where we have eminent uh, national and international faculties. First, we have Professor Dennis Mukabikov from Kurgan, Russia. Then we have Amar Sunia Jansal State, and we have H.P. Singhsar and Puran Kansara. Now, let me introduce our international faculty. So, Professor Dennis Mukabikov, or uh, Mukabikov, uh, Dennis Sadiwi is the head of traumatology and orthopedic department, number four of the Elizabeth Center, candidate of uh, medical sciences, researcher at the laboratory of clinic for reconstructive osteoarticular surgery of children and adults, traumatologist, orthopedist of the highest category, member of Society Russia, member of Association of Traumatologists and Orthopedists of Russia, uh, like uh, orthopedic pathology of adults, uh, that includes consequences of injuries and surgical interventions, improperly healed fractures, long bones, defects, deformations, shortening and false joints, including the presence of foreign bodies like rods, screws, bone plates, knitting needles, etc. Benign tumor and tumor-like uh, bone diseases uh, and consequences of injuries to large joints, degenerative disease of hip jo joint, and then uh, on in the pediatric orthopedic pathology, his work on consequences of injuries and operations, deformations and shortening of limb segments, congenital pseudotosis like false joints of limb segments, benign tumor and tumor like bone diseases. He says, practice methods of treatment uh, are following the transosseous osteosynthesis according to G. Elizero. Uh, locked intermediately also synthesis, various options of bone grafting, combination of methods like synchro synchronous, sequential, submersible, and transocious synthesis. His work on hip replacement. The main direction of scientific and practical activities is like uh, optimization of the treatment process in patients with orthopedic and traumatological pathology, complicated and uncomplicated prevalent infection, development of new pathologically, patho uh, pathogenetically uh, substantive expedient uh, methods of surgical treatment aimed at. Comprehensive uh, restoration of anatomical and functional state of the limb, general hemostasis and persistent uh, separation of prevalent inflammatory phenomena, and combination of submersible and transosseous osteosynthesis in, uh, methods in the treatment of patients with consequences of trauma to limb segment. These are his contacts. His email is uh, uh, like uh, tw 4 at uh, rnctu.org. So now I request uh, Professor uh, Dennis to share his talk. Dennis, sir. Over to you, sir. Okay. I'm glad to see you, my dear friends, my dear colleagues. Are you here and see me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can I start my presentation for you? Please do, sir. It's okay. Yes, sir. Please go full screen, sir. Yeah. Not yet. Please go full screen. Okay. Yes, sir. Please go full screen, sir. Yeah. Please go to slideshow okay. mode. Slideshow mode or full screen. Full screen. I try to do it. I make a full screen. No, the first slide. The first slide, sir. On the bottom okay. right, on the bottom right, on the bottom right, sir, you have a button of uh, full screen, just beside seventy-six percent. 
Right. All right. More, more, more right to it, sir. More right. The button just right to it, sir. Uh, just yes, 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 exactly. This one. Okay. It's not going full screen. Okay, sir. We can start from the uh, first slide, sir. Do you see the slide? Yes, we can see, sir. How can I make a full screen? I see the full screen in my presentation. But, uh, Mahashi, can you help? Uh, yes, sir. Can you help uh, Professor Dennis uh, go full screen? He's not able to do. So just click on this uh, page. Uh, double tap. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, because... you, you sir, try double tap on page. Go on the slide show more, sir. What can I else do? I I full I, I see the full screen of my presentation. Okay, you are seeing the full screen. <laughs> Any settings in the computer that you can help Mahashi? Jan sir, shall yeah, we start with also? Jan sir. Sir, I can I cannot understand that uh, language. Language, the language is a problem, sir. <laughs> Wait a second, sir. In the options, you have a slideshow mode and go uh, the top. Sir, sir, in downward there are option plus or minus. Sir, in the options, you have a slideshow mode and go the yes, right side. Right side, you can at least zoom out. Or I think that there was an option on full screen also in bottom or right side. Right side. Right side. So on the top you have a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth option is slideshow on the top, sir. I can see through Google Translate. Nice idea, sir. Yeah. Just beside seven six percent, click on the full screen. Jan sir, shall we start like this? Is it okay? It's okay. I think we can start, sir. It's okay, we can do like this. Yeah, sir. we can Fine. start with okay. this. Okay, we can start. Okay, sir. may I start? Yeah, please, sir. Please, sir. Okay, dear sir, colleagues, I want to. Ready. I want to represent you some uh, cases of the treatment of patients with pseudoarthrosis and defects of off bones with um, bone transfer from reserve. Uh, the clinical base is our department uh, number four of the National Medical Reserve Center, and we have uh, some experience of the, uh, the <clears throat> 14 years uh of uh, our department so the slides are not moving sir also we have a uh, result of transosseous osteosynthesis interleukin intermediary osteosynthesis various <laughs> variants of the bone plastic and combinations of these techniques but today we will talk about the native reserve of transosseous osteosynthesis uh, you see that the uh, uh, Railway is uh, so much for it. Sir, we cannot. We can see the just the first slide, not the next slide, sir. Please click on the we next. Can't slide. see anything. Can see the first slide, slide, On the side, you can go to the next slide. Now you see my presentation. No. Can you see the first slide? I cannot no. see the uh, next slide. Sir. Do you see anything? Yes, sir. We can see your first slide. And now? It's not moving. Sir, I've sent you my email. You can share your uh, presentation to my mail. I'll run for you. 
in the chat box i shared my email <laughs> what can i do for you <laughs> i just shared the uh, in the chat box my email you can just mail your uh, slide to me in a moment i'll answer have you seen my message ah next over a way ake vasta zoom nen pora sa yes please mute everybody else hmm yeah hmm okay sir Sir, have you mailed to me, sir? Let it go. Let it go. No shot. Okay. In the meantime. Uh... as jan sir saying we can have dr amar sonis uh, talk first and then we'll in the meantime i'll get the email of uh, professor denis jan sir please professor denis please uh, uh, unshare unshare in the meantime uh, as jan sir saying we can have dr amar sonis uh, talk first and then we'll <coughs> maharishi <coughs> maharishi there is echoing of the sound coming like okay, what samshul spoke was uh, repeated again after some seconds yeah, i think there is youtube going on not is okay sir is it okay now sir i think it's okay so, now okay so now Dr. amar you start with yes. that yes uh, meanwhile professor dennis will uh, do the corrections whatever he can uh, or he'll send the mail to uh, shamshul so shamshul will run it professor dennis please mail your uh, ppt to my email sir okay so my uh, dr shamshul sir my screen is visible now yes please yes oh yes so, sir good evening everyone so what i am talking is uh, today is bone transport and its variants so in earliest if we go by history earliest reference in western literature about attempted destruction are uh, from cordula as early as 1904 and his disciple potty in 1921 he presented in a journal of american medical association about elongation of bone through osteotomy in first half of 20th century there are many publication uh, about dissection Uh, for lengthening, but there is no way to assume that Eliza had access to such publications. So even in later part of twentieth century, Wagner had attempted uh, length, lengthening with external fixator and diaphyseal osteotomy, but morbidity was too high with multiple complications, and basically all attempts were to create a gap to be filled with bone graft. to my knowledge none of them have documented the process of dissection osteogenesis this is a beautiful caricature by professor dr waldemar uh, golyski and uh, it says that the way newton had discovered a law of gravity similarly eliza had discovered the law of tension stress forces forces with just an anecdotal incidence of amputation stump landing in a war, world war 2 veteran so what history uh, has noticed that science in whatever progress science has witnessed there are two type of genius one is genius discover who brings out new idea and genius of completion who develops an existing idea it is a belongs to one of rare category of genius who not only develop an idea but bring that to its logical conclusion so <clears throat> what others could not do eliza did he brought that anecdotal incident of amputation stump landing to its logical conclusion 
He did extensive animal and clinical research on biological principles and stability concept uh, and histological mechanism. He defined optimal rate and rhythm. And he emphasized the need for preservation of blood supply while doing corticotomy. And due credit must be given to Eliza for this. So, <clears throat> out of this dissection of osteogenesis with Eliza hepatitis has many applications. Out of that, I will be talking on bone transport and general overview of bone transport. I will not limit my discussion to case-based discussion, but I will give you a general overview of bone transport. The various method of bone transport, one can classify it in monofocal, bifocal, trifocal, and tetrafocal. There are some variant plus fibular transport and some hybrid methods. In detail, each method. Monofocal osteosynthesis. What Eliza has observed that district hypertrophic nonunion converts fibrocartilage into bone, and this corrects not only deformity but gains length to certain extent. If you lengthen more than 2 cm, the regenerate quality is not that good. In bifocal osteosynthesis, process of bone healing occurs at two sites. Osteogenesis at dissection site and healing at non-union site. Gap is more than 4 cm. What we do is uh, dissecting this cardiogram at 1 mm per day and compressing the gap at 1 mm per day. Eventually, this will, tra will traverse and will reach to this part. And we, uh, th this part will have a regenerate and this fragment will dock to other fragment. This is a case example will open the three B fracture treated with primary laser. One can see here that the, all rings are connected with individual rods and there is a proximal block, distal block and a floating segment and proximal tibial corticotomy done. Here length remains same and the gap was 7 cm. The individual rod, when we connect each ring with individual rod, essentially what happens is that the, there is lengthening at corticotomy site and shortening at gap site. So these addresses soft tissue defect simultaneously. While using single rod, there is a pure internal bone transport. And this is outcome at 10 months. <clears throat> Regarding fibula osteotomy, it is optional while index surgery is done, but I usually do fibula osteotomy in uh, simultaneous dissection and compression at the time of docking. And in some cases where there is not only defect, but misgap, but sorting also, in those cases, post uh, defect is addressed at the time of docking, one need to continue the dissection in order to address the limb discrepancy. In some cases where the gap is less than 4 cm, especially in tibia, one can opt for acute or accelerated compression at gap site. And in those incidences, one can gradually dissect corticotomy site to gain the length. In this, this condition, in leg, one need to do fibular osteotomy in order to compress acutely. And patient will have some pseudo-paralysis-like effect due to decrease in lower arm of muscle, which eventually patient, uh, that strength will gain as length is gained. This is an example where a, a small gap was compressed acutely and gradually distracted distal corticotomy. This has in, some inherent, discerned, uh, inherent advantages, especially in femur. Uh, this patient reaches the stage of docking and union process begins early. Second admission and surgery for docking is avoided. Axial deviation of transmitted fragment is avoided. And follow-up visits are not as stringent as those in bi uh, bifocal simultaneous dissection and compression. And in some cases where patient is non-compliant, Patient will end up with some residual shortening, but union prospect will not alter. All those patients in which we do acute compression or accelerated compression will require compensation in footwear in early stages in order to emulate them. In those cases where the gap is very large, one can use such dummy, dummy ring to allow patient to walk earlier. Regarding trifocal osteosynthesis, I'll go through why, basis why the trifocal osteosynthesis is required. On an average, healing index is around 30 to 45 days per centimeter. That means if a patient is hanging 10 centimeter gap, expected duration in frame would be 10 to 15 months. And whenever the frame is kept for such extended period, say more than 15 months, wires deform plastically, there are pin tract issue, frequent follow-up visit, loss of phages, and at times cumulative effect of this leads to premature frame removal, refracture, persistent non union and in some cases even amputation also. So <clears throat> what options we are having? Can we uh, fasten the distraction, uh, means reduce the distraction phase 
or can you reduce the consolidation phase? Regarding increasing uh, reducing the distraction phase, one need to distract more than one millimeter per day, and that will lead to frustrate the new capillaries and lead to hypertrophic regenerate. So this is not a good idea to dissect for more than one millimeter per day in order to reduce the dissection phase. To reduce consolidation phase, what Professor Catani has suggested is consolidation time of regenerated bone segment is inversely proportional to its length. So two shorter fragments will consolidate more rapidly than one long segment. So a 10 centimeter gap will heal more rapidly if two five centimeter dissection gap is made in the same segment. So uh, there are two variants, converging trifocal and tandem trifocal. When, whenever there is a large diaspherical gap, more than eight centimeter, one can opt for converging trifocal, uh, 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 converging trifocal osteosynthesis, where a proximal and distal corticotomy and transported fragment will converge towards each other to reach the talking. This is a case example where grade three B fracture presented at one and a half month with exposed avascular bone. This preoperative planning dotted white line is suggestive of tentative area of resection. White lines are tentative placement of ring, and red lines, dotted red lines, are uh, tentative place where cortic term will be done. This is a prefabricated frame and post op image. This proximal and distal cortic term will be done once soft tissue stabilized. <clears throat> And such patient in converging trifocal will have a very near second and third ring, and one need to replace those ring in order to have a good radiological visualization for follow-up period. Uh, this this image at ten month where good regenerate consolidation and docking side union is seen. When the gap is eccentric, say more than eight centimeter gap, but it is eccentric situation. One can do two corticotomy in a long fragment. One would be metaphysical, another would be diaphysical. And in such situation, transported fragment will run in tandem to reach towards other end. That <clears throat> transport would be from proximal to distal or distal to proximal, depending on the location of the gap. This is an example where a large uh, avascular fragment is that, uh, then that was removed. Uh, dotted lines are tentative area of resection and red lines are tentative area of corticotomy. This is how a prefabricated frame will look and this is immediate post of image. Regarding use of uh, all wires versus half pin, in transported fragment, if you use two wires, then they will have a minimal spanning, say less than 30 degree. In contrast, if you use a one middle face wire and half pin, that will have around 90 degree spanning that will prevent toggle and give good stability. And I prefer to use individual rods instead of single rod it's, as it is very difficult to comprehend trifocal transport with single rod connecting from first to last ring. This is an example where a segmental open TPF fracture presented with, to me. Initially, I thought of preserving middle segment, but when I opened it, it was totally avascular. So around 20 centimeter bone was removed and bone ends were refreshing. Uh, this clinical picture, proximal metaphysical corticotomy, and uh, below it, a diaphysical corticotomy done images while transport. And eventually, at 11 and a half month, it united nicely without limited discrepancy and with good functional outcome. All patients with trifocal osteosynthesis with large gap will have an uh, inherent risk of developing equinus. So, one should apply a footing in order to prevent equinus. And in some cases where there is a pre-existing equinus, one can use footing to correct that equinus. And that, that footing is usually removed 6 6 post docking. Regarding docking, if there is an intact soft tissue sleeve, one can offer close docking. When there is a large soft tissue defect, skin invagination will surely occur. And those patients will require open docking instead of close docking. Regarding tetrafocal, this is quite an uncommon situation where there is a segmental fracture with segmental defect where two cortex is done and process of healing is occurring at four different sites. So the term is tetrafocal. I'll just go through one example where a segmental fracture where both proximal and distal part where bone were exposed with knee F15 ankle equinus. Patient was treated with uh, frame and Diaphysical and distal metaphysical corticotomy done, reached the stage of docking at eight weeks, and eventually it healed at 10 months with good functional outcome. Regarding cross olive wire, these are bone transport variant. I'll go through each in some detail. <clears throat> when a size of fragment is too small, 
to allow additional ring. This cross olive wire method is very useful. And to use this method, uh, one need to have good soft tissue sleeve. It is contraindicated when there is a poor soft tissue sleeve. And it is not recommended in gap, in patient where gap is less than 5 cm. This cross olive wires pulls the transporter fragments of horse and they are attached to distal ring with threaded rods, th uh, slotted threaded rods or female hinge. And there is an empty ring in second, empty second ring. Eventually at the time of docking, transverse wire are inserted and these cross olive wires are removed. So this cross olive wire avoids transacting scar tissue as it happens with transverse wire. This is the main advantage of using cross olive wire technique. But these wires are not tension one and if one is using hybrid frame, one need not uh, uh, have that difficulty and I avoid using this cross olive wire method. I rarely use it. So about cable transport. To be truthful, I do not have any personal experience with this method. Dr. Singh sir will cover this topic in later part of uh, this session. This uh, Everyone who is familiar with bone transport must have noticed this such carrying which happens with uh, simple transverse wire conventional transport. And it is because uh, skin is cut through every time we distract at corticotomy side. So this cable transport is done at pretext of increasing the patient's comfort and it prevents soft tissue related to skin excursion, skin excursion and soft tissue invasion and mall element is prevented. Uh, Smith and Navio is having this elaborate system of uh, cable transport and if one is not having, one can simply use a CC screw and use a simple uh, SS wire to do so with LRS. So intake soft tissue sleeve is must and transport in flap. This is very useful technique with, with in patient with transport in a flap cover area where excursion of half pin and cables may compromise flap survival. This technique is not useful when we wish to correct simultaneously deformity and gap and when there is a rotational deformity element present. Regarding unicortical bone transport, this 65-year-old male had persistent discharge since five years and he was on and off antibiotics since five years. This is how post gibride band cavity look and skin incision cap uh, depending on size of cavity and two drill holes are made for half in insertion. Multiple drill holes are made and those are connected with 5mm osteotum to create a unicortical bone which is transported with the help of two half pin. This post-op image shows uh, multiple drill hole which are connected with uh, <coughs> uh, osteotum and corticotum is completed. One can see here that there is a big uh, cavity of 6 cm by 2 cm and pie crusting attempted for skin closure but it was not successful. Eventually, these are images during transport. Initially, I did transport at lower rate and then gradually at four times a day. And at four months, the frame was removed and the transported fragment was fixed with two interfract screw. So the suffering of five years was ended in four month duration. And both bone and soft tissue defect healed simultaneously without flap, without bone graft. And the best part is patient remained ambulated during whole course of treatment. Regarding transverse bone transport, <clears throat> this Burgess disease is an inflammatory disorder of small and medium sized artery of unknown etiology with strong association with smoking and conservative treatment with drugs like vasodilator, prostaglandins, and sympathetic has limited roles in modifying the course of disease. One must stop the smoking in order to have an optimal outcome. And we all know, and it is even angiographically proven fact that the sticks and osteogenesis lead to 330% in increase in vascularity. And this improving blood flow has several implications. It relieves the rest pain, improves cloudy and distance, it heals the ulcer, it limits the level of amputation and allows the resumption of activity of daily living. There are various ways in which we can transport. This one way is to use an olive in which a lateral cortex needs to be overdrilled. Another way is to use half pin. Instead of half pin, one can use cross K wires also <clears throat> regarding fibular transfer. Uh, one can have a vascular fibula, non-vascular fibula, tibialism of fibula, or graduate transport of fibula. We'll go through each in some detail. This vascular fibula is an excellent option when facilities are available in treating very large defects, say more than 15 centimeters. It is very good in tibia. I less often recommend it in femur. 
when there is not enough healthy bone for two or one corticotomy and the soft tissue void is not as say posterior radiation in peripheral vascular disease. The only limitation is it requires patient to be shifted to tertiary care center where expertise of vascular and plastic surgeon to do required microsurgical anastomosis is there. And it has some donor site morbidity issues and in some cases, the infection and fracture of this vascular fibula also seen. This is another option is non-vascular fibula. I do not recommend it and one should not attempt this because it takes very long time to union, very long time to hypertrophy, needs to protect this in cast and breast because chances of refracture are very high and unprotected weight bearing takes very long. So if you go through cumulative morbidity of this procedure, it is very high. Regarding tibialization of fibula, this procedure was described by Thomas Huntington in 1905 and TDS era, it is rarely being used. I have seen some surgeon in Middle East using this technique. I have not used this technique because I prefer bone transport over this. This gradual transfer of fibula. Uh, we have witnessed an uh, excellent talk by Dr. R. A. Agrawal sir during last assignment on this topic. This case is operated by Dr. P. N. Vasudevan sir and he has kindly consented and given it to me to present in this. This 57-year-old gentleman presented to him two years post-injury with 15 surgery including vascular fibula which eventually got infected and he was awaiting amputation. So if this patient would have gone with conventional bifocal or trifocal osteosynthesis, it would have added uh, more morbidity in already patient who has been operated so many times. So what Sir chose was a segmental fibula osteotomy, slow transfer of fibula towards tibia. The fragment was docked at three weeks and frame was kept for four months and he was protected in PTB breast for a period of one year. If you see eventual outcome, fibula is nicely united both proximal and distally with tibiofibular synostasis at both level without limb length discrepancy, without bone graft, without cleft cover. So this limb is salvaged with minimal morbidity. This is a case example from uh, Sir Eliza's book of transosseous osteosynthesis. This patient was treated 50 years back and herculean tasks achieved with least morbidity. Uh, <coughs> segmental osteotomy fibula, gradual transfer. And if you see the eventual outcome, see the fibula hypertrophy, Fibula hypertrophy is such a beautiful way that it allows full weight bearing unaided ambulation over a period of time. Hybrid strategy. <clears throat> One can have a transport over nail or plate or transport followed by nail and plate. We'll go through both in some detail. <clears throat> this transport over tens or endus. This, uh, <clears throat> this procedure is done for following purposes to achieve and maintain reduction to prevent axial deviation of transported fragment and to facilitate early frame removal. I do not use tens to do so because I feel that adequately stable frame is sufficient to serve above mentioned purpose, but one can surely use it and it is a good option. <clears throat> Transport over nail or plate, one need to carefully select the patient. Aseptic gap known in the cases where one can do so. Strategic placements of wires and pins and still there's an inherent risk of pin track issue and if that happens that will ruin so i'll just give an example there are four different cases presented in this slide out of this only first one is amenable to transport over plate second one is infected nail third one is infected nail in femur and fourth one is pathological fracture so second third and fourth are not amenable for transport over nail I'll give an example where I had treated a case with transport over nail. This patient had a, a comminuted femur with gap and he had ipsilateral compartment syndrome in leg and equinus in ankle equinus. So that patient basically came for treatment of this uh, foot deformity and I offered him simultaneous uh, correction of mis uh, uh, addressing the non inner also. I applied a three ring frame with three fixation point in proximal ring, three in distal ring and two in middle ring where one wire and half pin was there and cortectomy was done between second and third ring and frame was kept for two and a half months in femur and four months for ankle and eventually it healed without bone graft. When one is having infected onion with nail in C2 and one need, wishes to uh, do a transport over nail, it has a lot of inherent risk and morbidity. 
This patient was treated elsewhere where nail was removed and antibiotic created nail was given six weeks. IV antibiotics were given and at six weeks that nail was again removed and renailing and uh, transport uh, for transport, cable transport was done and frame was applied, which was kept for six months. So overall duration was of treatment was seven and a half months. Conventional, say, trifocal osteosynthesis would have taken, say, a few more months, but would have a lesser morbidity. Regarding transport over locking plate, this is not an anecdotal or experimental procedure. Even AO Mipo book has mentioned it this with this illustration and some case example. The only thing which I differ with this is the configuration which they have shown is not steady enough to prevent virus failure and to allow full weight bearing. This is a case example which was treated elsewhere at Tulsi Care Center where transport over plate was attempted. Patient was kneel weighting for 10 months partial weight bearing for 10 months, patient had 10 admission and prolonged IV antibiotic. So things are not as simple as it seems. And there is a transport uh, over LCP with LRS do not allow patient to walk full weight bearing in initial period. And there are still inherent chances of virus failure or fatigue failure of implant. This is one of case which I have treated with transport over fr uh, frame, uh, this uh, transport over plate. This patient had aseptic gap known in an I did implant removal, put a long plate, and uh, this way I have applied a frame. One can see here that there are three fixation points in proximal fragment, uh, posterolateral and posteromedial, and transverse via and distal fragment, and two 5 mm half pin in middle ring and cortic percutaneous corticotomy through anterolateral incision. Generally, we use lateral incision to do corticotomy. Here, I've used an anterolateral incision to do a uh, corticotomy. And uh, at two and a half month, docking was done and frame was kept for another one month. At the time of docking, half pin were removed and two locking were inserted in transported fragment and bone graft was kept at docking site. So another another strategy would be transport followed by a plate or nail. This is a case example of patient who belongs to community who are wandering, who do not have any permanent resident and who belong to very low socioeconomic class he had floating knee, open distal femur fracture with bone loss and segmental tibia fracture. I had applied frame in that he had six centimeter bone loss. At six weeks, he presented again with fracture neck femur, which I had treated with CC screw. And eventually, two and a half month docking was done and frame was removed at four months. At one year follow up, his neck femur uh, and regenerate consolidation and distal femur fracture and tibia fracture all had healed with reasonable range of knee motion. In some instances, post transporting TBI, there is persistent non inner docking site. One can opt for interlock nail, which heals the non inner site. And uh, this is a case example where I have used this strategy. Regarding internal transport with precise nail and plate assisted internal transport, to be truthful, this is beyond scope of my talk. And uh, there are some issues with this. Whenever a patient is hanging infected non union one need to convert it to non-infected non union in order to use this nail. In grade 3B fracture, one need to have a soft tissue coverage first before uh, doing internal transport. In real life scenario, we hardly get some cases where there is a pure aseptic gap non union and cost is prohibitively high for our Indian patient to use this device. We all know that uh, this uh, auto destructor leads to good regenerate consolidation because 17 micron uh, destruction is done in 60 steps at every 24 minutes. And this destruction rate mimics the growth happening in embryonic life. With such a small fraction, one can even destruct up to 1.5 to 2 millimeter per day without adversely affecting neocapillarization. So, till date, auto destructor are used in context of limb lengthening only. But someday one can use it in context of segment transport where we can reduce dissection phase around one and a half to two times and eventually consolidation phase also reduce because this leads to good regenerate consolidation. So bone transport itself has some inherent issues also like extended duration in frame. That part which I have addressed to some extent in this is my talk. There are other elements regarding regenerate issue, stability, and docking site issue one need to take care and address in order to give optimal outcome to the patient. 
So my take home message would be learn the art of bone transport, master it over a period of time. It will help in salvaging many seemingly non-salvageable limbs. Focus on adequate stability and good rehab and address docking site issues. Every trauma surgeon needs to know basic of Elizaro. Similarly, every Elizaro surgeon should know some basics of trauma too. At times, hybrid fixation builds out from persistent non union post bone transfer. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, Shamshul, any questions from the audience? Uh, not in the internet, sir. Uh, sorry, Dr. Sony, I couldn't uh, give you an introduction because of the switch of the talks. No, no, no sir. No, no problem, sir. I, uh, Amar does not need any introduction. He no, has exactly, his exactly. own figure. Exactly. No, exactly. no need, sir. So, sir, do you have any questions from the yeah, panel? One of the... Yeah. Hmm. Yes, sir. Is our international faculty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the office bearers of the Asami. So, it is his program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. So, uh, do we have any questions? Baris, sir, Dr. Beda, Dr. Rizwan, Professor Omer. Everybody is switch out the video. Marshi, can you allow everybody to unmute? Okay, sir. Please allow to unmute everybody. Allow to unmute. Done, sir. Yeah. Yes, Adisa, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Sir, we cannot see you, sir. Thank you. I have no question. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you are not look, seeing me, eh? Okay, yeah. you can you can hear my voice, eh? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, it's very good. Thank you very much, Amar Sani. Thank my you, My one sir. question, one question yes, regarding the... Uh, transverse bone transport. Yes, sir. Okay, you have shown the Burgess disease because it's very good technique. Uh, yes. I'm using lots of cases this for yes, Burgess sir. and at the same time for diabetes food patient. Yes, diabetes I'll go to your article also, sir. Yes, and yes. Uh, after how many days you go for distraction when you are doing TTT, uh, TBL sir, transverse technique? Uh, sir, around 10 days. And initially, the distraction would be at slower rate, say 0.25 mm twice a day only. Mm, thank you. This is good. Yes. This is the information uh, mm. for the young uh, orthopedic surgeons because the in the metaphysical region, we are going for four, five, six days. Uh, mm. But for here, uh, mm. 10 days because the cortical bone, that's why yes. you should have to wait for a long time. Yes, An sir. outcome is very good. It's a fantastic yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, result. Gratifying to patient and uh, he remembers the uh, yes. amount of rest pain and cloud uh, relieved is so magnificent, means so good. And the cloudy and distance increases like anything. Means yes. They, they, they feel so happy. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Uh, Sony, just yes, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, is a TVL trans transverse transport. Yes, sir. Uh, so after widening, the TVL becomes thick. Uh, the yes. Chinese they are doing again repositioning it back. What's no, your no no? We got... Sir, we dissect hardly for five to ten mm, and that much uh, widening patient accepts without any difficulty. The amount of pain relieved is so that you will not have any issue with such cosmetic issue. And that's not okay. painful. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any more questions, sir? Omar, sir, Dennis, sir, any questions? Excellent talk. Okay. No explanation. Thank you, sir. Haji, sir, any question? If you have any uh, questions that we can to the next stop by Dennis, sir. Jen, sir. I'm okay. Do you hear, see me? Yeah. So, shall I start uh, Professor Dennis's uh, presentation? Yeah, we should start. Yeah. So, wasting much time. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, sir, I'm just uh, sharing your talk. 
Uh, you just have to say next to move to the next slide. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Can everybody see the full screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah, then, then sir, please start. May sir. I start my presentation? Yeah, please, sir. Uh -huh. Okay. I am going to take you about the uh, treatment of the patients with pseudo arthrosis and effects of all bones and often with uh, bone transport. Next slide, please. No, we have a clinical base. Our department, the fourth department of the National Medical Reserve Center of Traumatology and Orthopedics, and uh, over the 14th uh, years, uh, we have uh, we have a big uh, children's. We have a big uh, uh, implants of uh, the treatment of such of these patients. Okay, next slide. Next, please. We often have a treatment techniques was laser of transosseous osteosynthesis, interlocking intermediate osteosynthesis, various variants of the bone plastic and combinations of the techniques. Next slide, please. Uh, you see that the relevance is uh, all the problem of uh, in our country and uh, in main of the world often. Next. Uh, now we can define what we uh, means the bone defects. So in our classifications of the Shevtsov and Makushin, we have the defect pseudoarthrosis and defect diastasis of the long bones uh, and the definitions in the one centimeter of diastasis. Over the one centimeter, we have a defect with pseudoarthrosis and uh, more than one centimeter between the bones parts, we have a defect diastasis. Next. The defects of arthrosis we classified by the hypotrophic, nomotrophic, and hypotrophic. You know it. The next. You see that the types of theft arthrosis by the classifications with the Weber and Czech, uh, we have a, a touchable and uh, removal it. The, uh, the viable theft arthrosis and the non viable theft arthrosis. I think in the same classification. Next. Uh, we have a monofocal, bifocal, polyfocal osteosynthesis, compression, distraction, and compression with distraction osteosynthesis, such as the native techniques of the reserve. Next. Now we see the clinical case of the young man who have a hypertrophic, uh, hypertrophic uh, defective arthrosis of the uh, <clears throat> tibia. Uh, now we make uh, the transosseous osteosynthesis monofocal with the lizard frame, make the corrigal uh, osteotomy of the, t uh, of the fibula, the gradual uh, compression and destruction with the roots. And now we have the consolidation of the bone. It's uh, the classical, uh, classical cases of monofocal transosseous osteosynthesis, which is suffered left by the uh, academic. The next. Now we see the clinical case of bifocal transosseous osteosynthesis. We have a young woman uh, with the defect of the distal part of the femur in the monolateral uh, dictator. Uh, okay. Uh, now uh, we can uh, we, we make the transosseous uh, osteosynthesis of the femur uh, <coughs> and the tibia uh, proximal osteotomy of the uh, female. Uh, gradually tra bone transport with the synostosis of the fibula and uh, the tibia, and uh, we have a consolidation. Next, please. You see the result, uh, and after it, we make uh, the lancering of the leg by the uh, lancering with the tibia. Next, please. Uh, now we have a case uh, of the polyfocal transosseous osteosynthesis. The young woman is a close structure of the both the bones of the uh, of the leg. Um, we have the osteotomy of the proximal part of the tibia 
and the distal part of the tibia and uh, the polyfocal transosseous osteus is, is in the lizard frame. Next, please. You can see the composed of the frame. It's not uh, so, uh, so exactly. And uh, we have a consolidation uh, uh, with the tibia without all the shortening of the leg after it. Thank you. Next. Now we'll see in post-traumatic pseudoctrosis a femoral deformity with a gun shown sequela. Uh, we have a um, next piece osteotomy from the um, pseudoctrosis. Next slide. Uh, gradual correction of the 28 days. And uh, after it, we have um, consolidation. Next piece. You see it, we remove the Lizara flame and we, we have a consolidation of the leg. And after it, we uh, uh, make a lancering of the light low extremity with the osteotomy of the distal part of the femur with the Lizara flame by the native methods of Lizara. Next. Uh, now I uh, will show you limb defects with arthrosis with the deformities in conditions of unstable and in, in infective fixation with internal metal caps. Next. Now we see the <clears throat> normal trophic uh, arthrosis with the femur with non-infective fixation. Uh, next, please. With uh, such old difficulties, so we have removed uh, this uh, uh, fixator, and uh, often uh, we have a lot of uh, 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 tragedy with the uh, uh, removal of the distal part of the nail. Uh, after it, we make a osteotomy from the defective arthrosis of the femoral and monofocal compressive um, osteosynthesis with the Lazara frame. Next, please. Now you see the consolidations, the frame was removed. Next. Now you will see the post-traumatic pseudoarthrosis of the humerus was uh, in patellar metal osteosynthesis with immigrations uh, with the fixator. Mm -hmm. Next. It will make an osteotomy and uh, monofocal compressive elizara frame. Next, please. We have a consolidation. So you see the X-rays uh, between the removal of the frame. Next. Now we'll see the fracture of the mm, nail with the normotrophic pseudoarthrosis of the tibia. And after it, we remove the proximal part of the nail and make the osteotomy uh, from uh, them. The fact of the arthrosis of the tibial and monofocal compressive osteosynthesis with the Lizara flame. Next, please. Side. Mm, you see the compression on the docking side, and after it, we have a consolidation. Next, please. Now, we'll see the young patient with the deformity of the low limb and the non effective fixator. Uh, I must say that uh, she was operated uh, about, about on 10 times uh, and uh, no effective treatment uh, she didn't have. Um, next slide. We, we remove the plate uh, of the tibia and uh, often we see that the defect, uh, not the arthrosis, we have a defect of the tibia. We make an economic resection of the tibia after it, we make a proximal osteotomy. You see the destruction is generated right here. Um, and after it, we have a bone transport uh, for the dock inside. Uh, next, please. Now we see the result after uh, one year and eight months of the follow-up. Um, after it, we um, planned uh, the osteotomy of the pro uh, proximal side of the uh, tibia and uh, distal side of the fibula for uh, lengthening the leg. Next, please. Now we see the defective the arthrosis with a non effective uh, metal fixator. Uh, next, please. 
we have removed it and after it we make an osteotomy of the femur and um, uh, monofocal compression osteosynthesis with a laser frame uh, on the docking side. Uh, next, please. And after we have uh, consolidation, the frame was removed. Next. Now, now I can uh, represent you a technique of inducting biological membranes and in, filling the defects of the long bones of the adult and patients. Uh, next. All of us will know the muscular technique, uh, but uh, we, uh, with my colleagues, uh, want to represent it you uh, muscular technique in the treatment of the post traumatic um, defects of the bones. Next. You see the young man uh, who what, uh, uh, he got the, the trauma in a traffic incident. And uh, uh, patients on uh, perfect um, treatment between us with uh, the only osteomyelites. Uh, now, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we make the resection of the tibia uh, with the implantations of the cement spacer. Uh, is the bone defect, the uh, monofocal lizard yeah, frame osteotomy, yeah. uh, the proximal yeah. part yeah. of the tibia, yeah. and yeah. gradually yeah. correction yeah. with the bone transplant. Yeah. Next, yeah. please. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is a consolidation um, with the shortening of the eight centimeters, but uh, no inflammation. Uh, but uh, after it, we'll make a um, uh, lancering of the leg with a native uh, monofocal distraction reserve frame. The next. Uh, now I will present you congestional, uh, congestional pseudoarthrosis of the tibia. Next. Uh, next, please, is a relevance. Uh, it's our uh, native classification. We like it with the Crawford was the first, second, the third, and the sec uh, six uh, types of pseudoarthrosis. Next. One more clinical case. The young men, uh, the young women uh, with the congenital pseudoarthrosis of the tibial bones near fibromatosis was the first type of Crawford, uh, Crawford's the first type. Uh, uh, she often uh, take a treatment uh, in his country, but with uh, such X-ray and clinical case we have in our clinic. Uh, next, we will make a resection of the uh, tibia um, <clears throat> in a distal part and uh, um, implantation of the cement bones uh, spacer and uh, proximal osteotomy of the tibia with a zero frame. Uh, after uh, four weeks, we remove the spacer and uh, make uh, the bone transport. Next. We have a consolidation after it, but uh, we have a shortening of the leg. After it, we make a zero frame with the proximal osteotomy of the tibia and the fibula and uh, gradual correction and lengthening of the leg. After it, uh, next slide. Now we see the lengthening and uh, the clinical case. Next. Now I uh, want to present to you uh, clinical cases, uh, the patients with a Gijan set tumor, osteoma, exostosis, melioma, and uh, after it, the defect of the bones. Next. Now we we'll see the classical uh, case of the Gijan uh, cell tumor of the fibula proximal metaphysis with a pathological fracture. Uh, we have a resection of the tibia, uh, uh, fixation with a Rosara frame, and osteotomy of the distal part of the, uh, of the tibia. As a gradual correction with the ball transport. Next slide. Now we we'll see the consolidation. Next, please. 
It's very interesting clinical case with a pathological fracture of the humerus uh, with the lytic type of the Gigan cell so, uh, tumor. It's a young man uh, with this, this X-rays and clinical uh, uh, picture. He came to our clinic. We have the. Um, uh, we make the also the. Um, resection of the all the diaphysis of the humor with uh, <clears throat> uh, free uh, bone uh, uh, correction with the um, um, fibula with the, the bone frame uh, and the frame uh, zero frame with the uh, intermediate fixation of uh, the wire with the hydroxyapatite and uh, co compression of the docking side. Next slide. Uh, now you see the picture in our operation theater. You, you see the, also the total uh, defect of the humerus, of the office of the humerus. You see the uh, tumor tissues in the intermediate channel. And now you see the uh, bone uh, fragment with the bone, uh, bone uh, transport. Next, please. After it, we have a consolidation in this uh, type. Next. But after it, uh, the patient was a fault uh, with the fr closed fracture of the uh, fibula transport. And uh, we have also, again, a compression monofocal osteosynthesis with the Elisara friend and inter intermediate uh, fixation with the wire with the hydroxyapatite. Uh, next, please. You see the uh, function uh, of the uh, upper extremity after uh, um, <clears throat> remove the Elisara frame. Next, please. Express pictures after two years after treatment. Next, please. Uh, one more case uh, with the post traumatic pseudoarthrosis with the honococcal uh, or with the right humerus and the foreign bodies. Uh, next, please. We have a resection uh, also the over the total resection of the office of humerus um, and uh, uh, <coughs> fibula graft uh, osteosynthesis with the uh, Elisara frame compression of the docking site with the intermediary elastic nail with the hydroxyapatite um, uh, foundation. And after uh, next slide. And now we will see the resection material of the Ihonococcus kitsis. Uh, with the non-effective fixation of the plate. Next, please. Now we have a consolidation <laughs> of the six months follow-up. You see this uh, picture. Next, please. Also, the CT pictures of the fourth month follow-up. Next, please. Maybe it's so. Uh, I want to hear your questions. Thank you. Really interesting cases, especially tumor cases were mind blowing. Questions from the audience? Uh, Yes, sir, Bari, sir. I am. Yes. Can you see my face now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, Denise. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Spasiba Balshoi. Uh, you have shown a lot of cases. And uh, I have the observation and some few questions. One thank thing, you. Yes. One thing is that uh, your <coughs> external frame uh design and at the same time dressing is very good this is the learning for everyone that which i learned from kurgan center dressing from the outside that is very good 
And in the TV, you, are, you have viewed all the wires, not the pins, only purely Elizaro technique. In, in the proximal femur, you have used the pins also. And the middle and lower, only the wires. Okay, that I do. So, uh, you have shown one case of Crawford, that is type 4, CPT case, CPT case. And uh, uh, you treated that one by, you, you know, that is by uh, normal, not reserve, and you have used the spacer, CPT case. And uh, how much time it took, this is number one. And number two questions, in most three or four cases you have shown, you are using hydroxy epitate in case of using the fibula. What is the cost of the hydroxy epitate? This is very good that I have seen in your center in Gurgaon. What is the cost of the hydroxy epitate? I don't know. In India, they are using a hydroxy epitate with K wire or Elizar wire. And what about the cost of that one? This is the case. And last one is the echinococcus that you treated with hydroxy epitate with fibula grafting. What about the outcome? You, you, you followed all my questions and observations? Okay, I will ask it for the first questions. Uh, for, for first questions, I think that uh, um, it's normally to make a fixation of the spacer about uh, three or four weeks. Uh, we have a experimental uh, experience and uh, we think that the f three or four weeks is the normal for fixation with the spacer and after it we remove the spacer and uh, make a bone transfer in the first question. I agree with me. Uh, you are going the bone transfer, not putting the bone grafting. But musculate technique, they are putting the bone grafting after using the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I told you that we with uh, Professor Bozunov will make that to transpose yes, that is, that is the, the tangential self-dartrosis by post-traumatic self-dartrosis. And uh, we also have uh, beautiful results, uh, it seems to me. Thank you. Uh, the second question the, uh, you ask, uh, we also have... Um, uh, big experience with the um, using of the wire of uh, the intermediary fixation with the hydroxy apatites and uh, we like it because uh, this wire have uh, also uh, conduction and also induction uh, uh, mains and uh, yes. we love it uh, we make it it's not a main fixator. It's just for yeah. uh, bone stimulation. And what about the cost of hydroxyapitate with that wear? The cost? Cost? No, I don't, don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know it. <laughs> you don't know? It's, uh, it's okay. not for me yes. question, Barry. It's not for me question. But... Uh, I, I, I think I just a, a little bit costly. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Bar. Mm. Uh, any more questions? Jansen, there's, any questions? Quite, right there. there's a question yes. from Praful. How does cement spacer help in CPT? Repeat one more. I don't understand it. How does the cement spacer help in pseudarthrosis of congenital pseudarthrosis? We make a cement spacer about the three or four weeks and uh, with the post-traumatic pseudarthrosis and with the congenital. And uh, I repeat that uh, we have uh, our experimental experience and uh, we saw that uh, the three or four weeks is the more uh, probable for the uh, removal of the spacer with uh, biological membrane and uh, it uh, will be such uh, good uh, blood supply in, in, in this case. But they don't use cement. After forming the membrane, they're going for bone transportation. 
ओके ये कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ मैस्क्यूल विथ ट्रांसपोर्ट यस ओके देर वॉज देर इज वन मोर क्वेश्चन मोस्ट प्रोबली इट वॉज मेड फॉर अमर अगेन फ्रॉम प्रफुल टिप्स टू अवॉइड डिविएशन ऑफ द ट्रांसपोर्टेड फ्रेगमेंट so i would say the main main thing would be stability of frame if frame is stable then the transport trade fragment will have minimal deviation and if it all it occurs one can always adjust with the help of hinges and washer but if frame is stable then the chances of deviation are very less and generally this <clears throat> deviation is adjusted at the time of docking okay Shamsul, you have any comments, questions? Sir, we don't have any more questions, sir. Any comments from your side, sir, Jain, sir? No, 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 not from my side. Uh, they are professors already said. So we can move ahead, sir. We yeah, after yeah. permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No permission yet. <laughs> so uh, we'll move, now move to the case discussion. Uh, first, we'll have the case discussion from Harjit, sir. He's very famous for his uh, police system for the bone transport. Harjit, sir, over to you, sir. it's cable system yes cable system yeah right sir hello yes sir yeah can i start yes, yes sir. sir you can yes, yeah um, um, i'll be speaking on uh, bond transport by uh, cable pulley system so bond transport that's one minute yeah bone transport is a uh, established and time proven method so when i started around 30 years back it is still same that uh, you do a corticotomy and uh, fix the bone fragment uh, with wires or pin and then when uh, ring moves the bone fragment also moves and the gap uh, gradually regenerate forms in the gap so but then uh, there are some problems with uh, this external type of uh, bone transport that it's very painful and uh, it leaves behind the scars of the pin and uh, uh, wires linear scars and sometimes uh, uh, soft tissue bunches up and uh, at the place of docking it becomes very difficult to open it so the alternative is internal transport so in internal transport it can be done by just like in this case uh, uh, bone gap at the proximal metaphyseo diaphyseal junction so it can be done by oblique wires so I did few cases with all oblique uh, wires but still it's a little problematic because on the end you have to put twisted plates and then as the uh, bone fragment uh, advances the the slotted rods uh, protrude out and uh, on medially and laterally and it becomes difficult for the patient because of the bulk of the uh, frame then uh, next alternative is cable system so i saw it first time in 2014 um, mr bomkart he showed cases at assami conference in 2014 so you see there is a uh, 
this thing which is holding the fragment there are no wire and pins so i asked him how do you fix it so he told that uh, they have a uh, teflon anchor made especially for that and through that they transport the fragment but that type of uh, teflon anchor and etc is not available here so this is another uh, a photograph from other paper uh, they are doing a cable and pulley system but they have not uh, uh, shown how they hold the, um, uh, the tracted fragment so uh, with this principle i tried and then uh, i made this cable system of, of our indian version so we use simple it is very simple we use a uh, tension bend wire number 18 and uh, simple pulleys which are available online and uh, so slotted rods threaded slotted rods so when doing when doing debridement at that time you have to decide whether you want to do a cable transport or not because once you have fixed the frame then you cannot put the wires inside so what do you do is uh, make 2.5 mm drill holes around about 2 uh, cm from the edge of the uh, bone and uh, take uh, tension bend wire about 1 m and then uh, from those holes you uh, insert the both ends of the wire from outside in and then uh, at the opposite end you again make two holes and then pull out the wires when the wires are out then they you, uh, then they wires can be out through the wound or through the skin uh, the next is you have to fix the wires to pulley and then uh, slotted rod it can be fixed in this way or in uh, on a medial and lateral side also so this is a case where the uh, wires are have been inserted and uh, this shows where is the pulley and this is the threaded rod so with threaded rod you just uh, pull there is no uh, this is at the time of uh, uh, fixation later on when uh, uh, you start distracting you remove this pin or a wire in the middle fragment so there is a hold on the bone on the proximal fragment and distal fragment and in between there is no hold on the wires from the ring so precautions are that uh, wire should not be jumbled up and uh, wire pull direction should be centrifugal to the exit hole in the bone so this is a case uh, usual story fracture tibia fixation infection implant exposed flap coverage done still implants are exposed and infected non union is there so in this case when doing debridement i pass these wires from uh, this end to uh, the distal fragment okay and uh, then uh, you can distract through those two wires attached to the pulley and uh, uh, uh th threaded slotted rods and uh, then you can have a good regenerate there is no problem uh, with the regenerate while doing uh, with the cable transport and uh, another case again almost same story but here there is no internal implant but x fix is there and the flap has been done that shows that the bone was dead so this much bone was removed and uh, cable system was done so in this way when you distract uh, there is no uh, almost no chance of uh, uh, <coughs> sorry uh, deviation of the middle fragment and uh, this is the result that's all it's very simple system it's very cheap and uh, reproducible thanks that was quite innovative uh, technique sir so such uh, a wonderful sir yeah anybody can do it anybody orthopedic any orthopedic surgeon who is doing bone transport can use these things and do it yeah dr bari any 
comments of yours? Uh, <clears throat> if I have to pass comment, Mr. Singh, you just take it easily. The fundamental principle of Elizarov methodology, this is not Elizarov that what you have done. I have seen lots of pins you have put in the tibia. And at the same time, that we know, the fundamental principle of Elizarov methodology is load and motion. How do you counsel your patient after doing this kind of bone transport? And you are telling that the whenever you are putting the wires in tibia, it is very easy, very simple and very fine. And never, patient, if you follow the basic principle of the Elizar methodology in TBI, it is very easy. Patient that does not have any complaint if you put follow the principle of the Elizar, original principle of Elizar. But I don't know. I have seen this kind of cable pulley system. And this is your innovative. And if you, how many cases you have done, I don't know. And do you have any publication of that one? So that somebody can follow your uh, this case. This is my observation. Uh, even then, thank you very much that you have shown your Indian version, cable pulley system, uh, and how many cases you have, you have done. And do you have any complications regarding this? Very big, uh, you know, uh, more than I have seen seven, eight centimeters. So do you have any complications by doing this kind of cable pulley system? I've done around 15 to 20 cases till now. The problem occurs when the wire which is exiting from the distal fragment in a case of a proximal corticotomy, if the direction is not good, then uh, that can break the anti-cortex of the tibia. So okay. that is the only problem. Otherwise, I didn't fa face any uh, other problem. Regenerate is no problem. If corticotomy is good, any any Elizaro person doing Elizaro regenerate will be there. If corticotomy is not good, then whatever, whether you use external uh, transport, internal transport, regenerate will not form. So basic principles of Elizaro stability and uh, taking care of corticotomy are uh, there. But whether you do by external transport or uh, internal transport, it's innovation, it's changing. So we have to reach the goal. So I have reached the goal. So whether it is a principle of Elizaro or not, I don't mind it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Amar, your comments. No, sir, it is excellent method. Uh, only thing is one need to have a good soft tissue sleeve, one thing. And second thing that these wires should have an adequate strength. At times, this uh, simple SS wire may break. So the, those cables which are recommended in literature or in Western part, they are using a, means a cable with good tensile strength. This SS wire may, may give good strength in tibia, but in femur, I feel that a, it may require can, more strength. Can we use those uh, wires, I mean, uh, cables that are used for circulage? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Those those type of uh, wires are available. I've gone through some articles and uh, there's uh, a good system from Smith & Navy which is available for this cable transport. But it is very costly. Beyond reach of our most of patients. Uh, that is the point. It's very costly actually. Yes, so, so that's the same are, system what? I'm uh, telling. That is it's a very, uh, yeah. it is Indian version and it's very cheap. You have all the segments. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. That tension yeah, band wire 18 number, it's quite uh, strong. Yes, sir. Doesn't break. Sir, yes. any chance of uh, breakage of uh, anterior cortex while uh, doing the transport? Say, uh, the fragment which is being uh, tracted or... Uh, yeah, yeah. Initially, I was afraid, but uh, if uh, the holes are... Uh, around 2 to 2.5 centimeter from the edge, I don't think. And uh, okay. after I, I showed case where uh, I have put uh, both hands and uh, uh, transported through two pulleys. Uh, now I do it uh, that I pass two ends and then cut one end short and twist it. And then take only one wire, the, just like the system 
Mr. Bong Gar showed. So there is only one wire inside, and then it is coming out. So only there is one hole. The, actually, okay. <laughs> there is only one hole, and it, the skin is not moving over there. So it mm -hmm. becomes almost painless. Patient doesn't feel anything. They are much okay. very comfortable. The next, which can be attempted, is that say long transport. So we have to stabilize. So if later on we can, we want to put a internal fixation to reduce the duration of uh, frame. That will be possible because there is no scar in the between in between. So only proximally and distally there are pins holding, and in between it is a virgin area. So we can put a uh, lock plate uh, later on, because now many times uh, when I remove a frame in these cases or other cases, when I remove case, I just slide a lock plate and fix it proximally and distally. So it gives the additional stability. Even if uh, there are uh, there is a good regenerate, many times later on some fracture develops after removal of frame. You find it. so that way. I am thinking it may be possible later on. Praful wants to know: Are these wires tensioned? No, sir. Please again. I was wanting to know. Praful was wanting to know: Are these wires tensioned? Tensed. Tension, tension. No, no. no. The, so the, the question was, was the... not the question was not whether there is wires are tension. The question is, is there increased chances of infection? For we know that wires which are not tensioned, usually for the illusory, they will become loose and they might become infected. So in your case, do you feel that? So do you feel that there is increased chances of infection, or what have you encountered? In your cases, when uh, you are fixing wire for bone stability, then you are tensing it, right? Right. So yeah. those wires, right, this wire right. is not uh, giving the stability to the frame, but this wire, when uh, when uh, we distract it, it becomes tense. So we have okay. to monitor it. For uh, distraction, one mm per day that we have to monitor. So when we start, say some laxity is there, then you start giving more rate, and then monitor if the distraction is okay. Then you go, then you set the rate, whether you are doing two point two five four times a day or point two five five times a day for distraction purpose. Otherwise, no. And so you have not encountered increased chances of infection in that, none in none of your cases. No, 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 no. Good, good, good. Okay. Do we have uh, Professor Dennis over here? No. Any experience of using cable at Kurgan? Uh, Dennis sir, uh, do you have any experience of using cable system? Or similar things at Kurgan. Please unmute, sir. Okay, I agree with uh, the, the colleagues, but uh, we have uh, not big experience of this side, and uh, we also have um, classical methods of the bone transport. Are you hear me? Right, sir. Any more comments or like Professor Omar, any comments? No. Okay, sir. So, Jen, sir, shall we move to the next yeah. talk? So, Pura. we have a, a case discussion by our dynamic uh, Dr. Pura Kansara. Dr. Pura, please share. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'll have to go outside and start from beginning. 
So I'll stop here. Yes, first go to the first slide, then, then share. Okay. Why am I not exiting? You don't have to exit. Uh, you can just uh, minimize this and go to the PowerPoint. Okay, okay, yeah. So, go to the first slide and come back to Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Share screen. And also share. Share. Okay. Uh, I hope I am audible uh, clearly. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about bone transport of femur with Elizaro or rail fixator. It's not going ahead. Why is that? Just click with the mouse with a, a touchpad or just click on that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. So I will start with the case. It was a 60-year-old lady. She had chronic osteomyelitis of femur, no medical comorbidities and immunocompetent person. There was a discharging sinus from the posterolateral aspect of thigh. Knee range of motion was normal. And we can see the x-rays. The involved bone is clearly visible. I went ahead with uh, radical excision of the bone. So I removed 5.5 centimeters of the bone. Actually, I put on the Elizaro fixator first and then I excised 5.5 centimeters of bone, which was the involved bone and did a osteotomy in uh, lower femur. The culture uh, microbiology result showed E. coli growth and tablet levofloxacin was sensitive. So it was given for one and a half months. So this is a... Uh, distal to proximal bone transport of femur. And gap was almost obliterated at after uh, two months. And docking and bone grafting was done at two months. Uh, bone graft was autogenous corticocancellous graft. I was trying to show with markers, yes. So, uh, in this frame, we have to notice that all the rods have to be parallel to anatomic axis of femur in both views. And that way, uh, bone transport fragment will not deviate. Example of another patient to show that parallelism of rods is very important. And in the clinical picture also, we can see that the rods are parallel to each other and also to anatomic axis of femur. So in this patient, there is distraction occurring between the arch and the first ring. And in my operated patient, there was compression occurring. So basically, if we want compression or distraction to occur, then the rods have to be parallel to each other and also to anatomic axis of femur. This is x-ray three months after docking. There is healing of bone. And x-ray six months after docking. Fixator was removed after 10 months of docking surgery after progressive uh, dynamization. And this is the function at one year and two months. She is free from infection, uh, normal alignment, normal leg lens, but the knee is stiff. Now, uh, was it possible to do the same case with LRS fixator? So, I think it was possible. We can put three clamps total as shown in this diagram and we can do a distal femoral osteotomy as shown, in, uh, as shown by a red line. Now, the important thing is that uh, the minimum size of a fragment for a LRS clamp has to be 5 cm. Then only pin, uh, pin hole number 1 and 5 can be used. If it's a smaller fragment, then I think Elizaro fixator is better. And if you want to do osteotomy and distraction, then the minimum size of fragment required is uh, 15 cm. So 5 cm for each clamp and in between 4 to 5 cm. Another case of bone transport with LRS, uh, 
he was a 24 year old male and osteomyelitis is of femur infected non union so the bone shown in red uh, circle was necrotic it was removed and bone transport was done with uh, lrs fixator now this is accelerated bone transport so some acute shortening has also been done and upper femur osteotomy has been done for bone transport progress of bone transport the fragment reached at 2 months and at 2 and 1/2 month acute docking and bone grafting was done LLD eliminated after 3 month of distraction so even after this acute docking there is some shortening so the lengthening continues at the upper femur osteotomy site and the bone transport frame here is now converted into a limb lengthening frame x ray taken at 8 months after bone grafting and this is the final x ray now does it mean that lrs is better than elizaro for all cases of femur bone transport so we we should know that a correction of any deformity is possible with elizaro fixator but not with a rail fixator so lrs has its limitations and the deformities which lrs can correct are only translation in the plane of pin insertion and angulation in the plane of pin insertion it cannot correct any other deformity without placement of new pins so lrs is a very non forgiving implant this slide shows use of lrs for correction of a translation deformity we just have to pull the pins towards ourselves for reduction or push and this slide shows correction of angulation in the plane of pin insertion so this is a varus deformity and the pin placement is pure horizontal pure lateral to medial for that reason we can correct with lrs micrometric swivel clamp if insertion was in some other plane then this would not have been possible then the only way possible is to put new set of pins so here with the micrometric swivel clamp varus deformity has been corrected which is shown in the last x ray but if we have a deformity with a elizaro frame we can correct with hinges now in this this was a case of bone transport and there is a uh, varus deformation of the region rate and also some translation the cora is at lower end of the region rate so i planned to do a uh, uh, to put hinge on the concave side of the deformity and reduce this uh, deformity so the yellow arrow is showing hinges on the medial side of the bone and i put a rod on lateral side to shorten it and it corrected the deformity now with a elizaro frame i can correct deformity in almost any plane i can even do rotation correction all this is not possible with a lrs so i come to the take home message slide that segment excision and radical debridement can only be performed if one knows how he can reconstruct the bone loss advantage of elizaro fixator over lrs is that it is forgiving and changes in alignment after surgery is easier as compared with lrs elizaro bone transport of femur is more challenging than tibia so one must have enough experience in simpler cases before undertaking femur bone transport it is a good idea to perform some cases of elizaro bone transport and then use lrs fixator for femur patient and family must be mentally prepared before starting lengthy journey of bone transport thank you nice cases puro thank you sir <clears throat> any questions comments from the audience i have two questions can you hear me yeah yeah sir yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, thank you uh, dr pudav kansar 
uh, before doing uh, the surgery, when you are removing the fragment, do you go for fistulogram or sinogram routinely? This is number one question. Number two questions, in the femur, you have shown very good cases. And uh, do you uh, suggest the patient for a special cot, how they sleep in the bed? Yes, sir. I'll answer the first question first. Uh, I don't routinely go for a sinogram or a fistulogram. I just open the sinus with knife and wherever my blunt instrument is leading to, I go to that point and I take the judgment regarding bone involvement by naked eye examination only, the vascularity of bone. Uh, and sir, the the sleeping position with Ilizaro, I mean, it's it's really, I mean, I, I can't think of any solution. There is no there is no easy way out. I mean, if you can guide or anyone else can guide, it will be great, sir. What, there there what, is a special, a special uh, card for feedback. Yes, sir. What we can do yeah. is just cut, uh, means, uh, have a slot removed from that mattress so that patient will not have an flexion deformity while patient sleeps. That's special a card for feedback. In yes. the recess, a space, you must... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, make it. Yeah, you can do it very easily mm -hmm. and uh, comfortable for the patient. Otherwise, patient, if a straight way lies in the bed with femur uh, frame, uh, it is difficult for the patient uh, to uh, get comfortable situation in the bed. Thank you. Yeah, Arjit sir. Yeah. Uh, the problem with femur. Uh, sleeping posture occurs because we use full rings. If uh, you had noticed uh, in my tibial frame, I'm using only five eight rings. And uh, those rings are not uh, the five eight rings which are uh, being given by the company as a half ring. So I got made a thicker, thicker means broader, five-eight rings. So I use now uh, in almost all tibia and femur cases, five-eight rings. So backside is free in the tibia also and in femur also. And uh, if you use full rings in knee, uh, in femur, then chances of, of flexion deformity of knee are also there in addition to problem of the sleeping, unless uh, the patient keeps the leg elevated all the time. So I have been using five-way things which are not uh, the uh, bro as broad as the half rings for you, which we make a full ring, but they are broader. So the strength is good and uh, the posterior half is totally free. We can even stack two five by eight ring on each other to strengthen, or we can put very small rods to make a block. If you use two five uh, normal five eight ring or half ring and uh, combine it, then uh, when you are putting wire fixation bolt, you will have difficulty. Yeah. Because then uh, the, the, the broader part, and then you 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 may not sometimes pass the uh, ring, or there may be problem. So I got made uh, five eight rings uh, which are broader than that. That same you can also do. I can show you th those rings later on. Five eight rings we have been using the joint areas also proximal tibia or distal femur. Rest this we use other rings or in the proximal we use arches. No, the, 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 I use those five uh, especially made five eight ring in total frame. That is custom itself, right? I got you. Yeah, yes, yes. They are broader. Say if the normal is one centimeter, it is 1.5 centimeter. Okay, sir. If you uh, if you go to the history of Elizro, then uh, there was one uh, person whose name was O Ganeshan. Okay, sir. O Ganeshan used to use five eight ring only, and his rings were uh, special of alloy. And uh, he did. He had holes uh, in the ring like that, through which wire used to pass. 
regarding this uh, Aganisian, Professor Aganisian was my teacher also in yeah, CITO, yeah, Central I... Institute of Traumatology and Orthopedics. In 2003, Sorry, I met him and he died in 2009. Listen, yeah. Organisian and Elizara was the rival. Always rival. Organisian, Professor Organisian, he has used all the time half rings everywhere. And that is not in used in Russia also. That is the main uh, thing. And cost of the Organisian apparatus is much more costlier than Elizara apparatus. Yeah, yeah. So they are using in uh, only in situ central traumatology and orthopedics, not too much. In Elizabeth Center, no Organisian apparatus nowadays. Yeah. Thank Maybe. you very much. I attended his first conference around 35 years back at uh, Ludhiana Christian Medical College. There yes, I saw yes. him using these rings. Then I got one set, but then later on it was not available anywhere. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thing, sir, can we use the cable method for femur also? Oh, yes, we can. I have used in one or two cases. Uh, femur transport cases are uh, not that much uh, uh, in frequency as tibia. So it can be used. And uh, that I told you that uh, Mr. Baumgart, uh, he showed uh, uh, they, the, the, in femur also the, that uh, cable transport. So it can be used. There is no problem. Purab, there's one question for you. Yes, yes, please. When you're lengthening, having a deformity in the tract of regenerate, does the use of hinge for correction of deformity affect the regenerate? So, in the X-ray which I showed, I did closing wedge. So, the regenerate underwent loss of tension. It was not stretched acutely. If it was stretched acutely, it can be injured. But it was a closing wedge. So I put hinge on the medial side of a concave deformity. So the lateral side was relaxed, lateral side of the regenerate, and the medial side was having same tension. But I cannot put it on the lateral side, which means the convex side. Uh, Jan, sir, we have some questions from the internet, YouTube. Can I ask, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. This question from uh, Nizo Beats, country is not mentioned. For someone who did uh, cosmetic limb lengthening and has an internal nail in it, runs into a non union. How do we treat that? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, another, we have more questions. Is, uh, is the iliac crest graft enough to fill the gap? If not, what are these? Are not these are questions. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't, this don't question, how do we avoid nerve irritation during lengthening? Limb lengthening to last month, oh yeah, I think so. These yeah, questions, okay. yeah. These questions are already asked. Uh, mm -hmm. right, sir. Mm -hmm. but still, at 1mm, I hardly faced any problem of nerve irritation in cosmetic lengthening. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can, sim we can simply do a uh, Preliminary release if there is a nerve palsy and large lengthening with the, on the nail. Large lengthening and pterygium and these type of conditions, there you have to do this uh, release of peroneal nerve. Yes, and that is and non union also is not very common with nail in C2. Again, you can treat it just like a, by doing dynamization and PRP and bone graft. What all? Amar, what you all want to say? I means I have not encountered any cosmetic landing case. It means I have not treated, sir. Okay. So these are these questions are I think already been discussed, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And probably those are from Damien, not from orthopedic surgeon. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So one one question uh, for all the all the panelists uh, dis regarding distraction between an arch and a full ring. So, I mean, I only showed that case, but I think it has a limited capacity of lengthening. The virus will occur very fast. So, I try to distract between two full rings whenever possible. Like, if I have to put a full ring just below scrotum, then I will put. 
So what is the opinion of other other uh, speakers on that? I'll use a half ring and then uh, connect it with the help of a Italian arts oblique support to get the maximum uh, width medially. I mean, going maximum medially by help of a oblique support. Oblique support. Since it should cross the medial border of femur. Yeah. Your distinction. Uh, and probably all four distinction rods should be equidistant. Means two uh, intermedial, uh, postromedial, anterolateral, postrolateral. You should have four such dissection rod. And those middle rods should be medial than the middle border of femur. Can you uh, cover large gaps with this technique? Can you do large bone transports? Means I have done even up to 15 centimeters. My maximum is 6 centimeters and one 15 wala is under treatment. I can't comment at this moment. I've done till 19 centimeters maximum. <laughs> but yeah, of, uh, instead of a full ring at the level of scrotum, yeah. patient not able to walk, I'll go for a oblique support and uh, shift it there immediately. Means the, the pulley, pulley method, I think it is more appealing in that way because the <laughs> direction of traction is straight in line with femur. So uh i mean i think i would like to try it still if you are using pulley then also various will occur because if you are using italian arch proximally and full ring in the middle so generally you are putting three or four rods maybe you put one oblique support and come medial mm. to the yeah. line of the shaft femur it's very common problem. So now what I do is between Italian arch and the ring, I put almost five or seven or more rods. So the lateral side remains straight. What happens is there is a two or three rods, the rods bend. Because of the pull medially, the rods bend. So you have to keep the Italian arch and the ring parallel. So you, on the lateral side, instead of putting two or three rods only, which we generally put in uh, tibia or other fear, you put here five, seven, eight, whatever rods you can put and then fix. So the lateral border will be very strong. So it cantilever effect will go off because you know, the lateral side is very much strong. That may help. In very large gaps, uh, in, especially in femur, uh, in order to avoid translation or triangulation, I've been using uh, transport over tens so that it works as a guide belt and we can remove it later. Dr. Sir. Amar, what is your take on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a very good option. Yeah. Uh, and I do wire only frame. Wire only frame. You are using 10, 10 uh, okay, uh, for transport. Yeah. It doesn't increase the incidence of uh, infection. So one wire of pulley, if you are using cable pulley, then one wire will not increase the uh, in, uh, chance of infection as someone <laughs> was uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, noticing and asking. Okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. So Shamsul, last comments, final comments from... Uh... Professor Dennis, and then we conclude. Yeah. Professor Dennis, we request our uh, last final comments from your side for this webinar, sir. Oh, okay. I want to add uh, that the, with the uh, virus uh, deformity uh, between the lancer and I think that's more possible for correction is to put the proximal um, base of the frame with the virus correction and uh, to use the hinges, not rods, only the hinges with the virus correction. And uh, that's why uh, you have um, possible to correct the virus deformity between the lancerin, okay? Uh, with uh, When you have um, uh, proximal base with the virus correction, it's my mind. 
Uh, we, we often used, used it uh, in our clinics when we have a lancer in all of the five or six centimeters of the femur, for uh, example. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, so shall we conclude? Is there any more comments? No. Any questions, any comments? Or, Amar, you want to add something? Nothing, or... sir. Okay. I have one question for Amar, sir. Yes, please. Yeah. Raful. So, like, yeah. So, like, if you are using, like you said, the when you are use, using an Italian arch, hmm. and the, you have that anteromedial and posteromedial uh, connections, huh. they this should option. cross the medial border of the femur. Yes. That so, is... There is no problem with the anteromedial. Usually, hmm. there is this problem with the posteromedial connection. Yes. So, that will touch the bed. Mm -hmm. So, you have any tips so, like what you should do? No, no, that's why I said that we should cut the mattress, uh, that part of mattress, uh, length of mattress in which the frame is there. Mm -hmm. So, when the patient lies down, the, he will be in a flat position and the ring will be touching the, uh, I mean, squat. It will be going into that hole. Into yes, that. Yes, yes, okay, yes. so you always use that. Mattress yes. for when you are doing yes. female cases. Yes. We need to uh, teach them and they, they should use that at their home also. Okay, okay, okay. So I have had that problem. Uh, that should be at least four inch thick. Okay, okay, fine. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Samsung, you are concluding statement and then we leave yeah thank you sir so thank you everybody uh thanks professor dennis dr amar sir jain sir ajit sir bari sir amir sir thanks for a wonderful interactive session i hope all the young surgeons have learned a lot from this and we'll be doing this more and uh, next month most probably we have a webinar on uh, compound fracture so we invite uh, everybody in that and besides we'll invite all the state to the to do their uh, budding as webinars so and give chance to young surgeon so that we get more of learning of the basics. Uh, with this, uh, uh, I just thanks everybody and good night to everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Rasa. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Thank thanks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. So can we stop uh, live? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please end the Maharshi. Please end. Marshi, are you there? Okay, I'll no, do. yes. Hey. I'll, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. Take over the command.